In this video, we will continue to go over the anatomy of the Gradient CCV, focusing on the layout of the front panel controls. The goal of this video is to become familiar with the location of the CCV's ventilation parameters, settings, and alarms. Looking at the CCV front panel, you will see that it is divided into three different parts. These are differentiated by the color of the background. Let's start with the smallest of these sections with the green-gray background found in the upper left corner of the front panel. Here, you'll find the power switch and two quick start modes. The power switch turns the CCV on and off. When operating the switch, always be sure to turn the knob all the way to the left to the zero for the off position and all the way to the right to the number one for the on position. To the right of the power switch are two quick start modes, one for adult patients and one for pediatric patients over five kilograms. These modes are preset and saved by a clinician and allow for quick initiation of ventilation. During session two, part three, we will cover how to program these quick start modes. Now let's look at the panels with the light beige background and gray background. The light beige color is used to distinguish inputs, meaning the parameters and settings that can be set or changed by the user. The gray background panels are the outputs, used for parameters and alarms that are automatically calculated or measured by the CCV. We will start by looking at the ventilation modes panel located in the middle section on the far right side of the front panel. Here you'll find the options for ventilation modes. The first five modes are standard ventilation modes, including volume assist control, volume synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation or volume SIMV, pressure assist control, pressure SIMV, and CPAP. After selecting one of these five modes, you then have the option to set applicable parameters to fit the requirements of the patient. Just below these ventilation modes, in the same section, there are three custom mode options. Custom modes can be changed and programmed by a clinician at any time. We will go over this in more details during session two, part three. Now, let's turn our attention to the top center section of the front panel where you will find the ventilation settings. These include various ventilation parameters that can be set according to the patient's needs. These vary based on the mode you are using, but the full set of options includes inspiratory time, percent or two, breaths per minute or BPM, positive end expiratory pressure or PEEP, peak inspiratory pressure or PEEP, tidal volume, pressure support, and trigger sensitivity. To change these parameters, use the adjustment arrows on the parameter slash mode adjustment panel located on the bottom right-hand side. This panel is the primary means of controlling the CCV. The adjustment arrows are used to change the numeric value of the ventilation settings or to select ventilation modes. To change a mode or setting, simply press the button of the parameter you want to change and wait for it to start flashing. Then use the up or down adjustment arrows until you reach the desired value. Then press the parameter button again to confirm the change. To lock the front panel controls and prevent any changes, press the control lock button. We will review how to set ventilation parameters in more detail during the first part of session two. Now that we've covered ventilation modes and settings, let's review the sections with the gray background on the far left hand side. These are the parameters and alarms that are automatically calculated or measured. The first is the calculated parameters panel. These calculations are based on the mode and parameters set by the user and include flow rate and IE ratio. Note that the IE ratio is shown as a ratio with the numerator always set to 1. 
it is calculated based on the inspiratory time and breaths per minute. Flow rate is calculated based on the tidal volume and inspiratory time. To the right of the calculated parameters is the measured parameters panel displaying the parameters that are directly measured by the CCV. These include the measured tidal volume, AOA pressure in centimeters of water, a number of spontaneous breaths per minute. There is also a green light to the right of the spontaneous BPM that will illuminate when the ventilator detects a patient-initiated breath. Note that as the AOA pressure measurement changes throughout the breath cycle, the CCV will display the pressure as it varies, then hold at peak inspiratory pressure and end expiratory pressure. Now, let's turn our attention to alarms. The ventilator alarms panel is located in the bottom left hand corner. The purpose of this panel is to signal when the patient or ventilator requires attention from a healthcare provider. When the ventilator detects a problem, the alarm siren will sound, the primary alarm light will turn on, and a red indicator light illuminates next to the name of the triggered alarm. If the problem resolves, the primary alarm light will turn off, but the red light next to the specific type of alarm will remain as a record to inform users that the alarm was triggered at some point. This is not the case for the low oxygen and low air source alarms, however, which will fully clear if the gas sources are restored. The alarm silence slash reset button is used to silence the siren and to clear any illuminated alarm indicator lights for alarms that are no longer active. To set the upper and lower limits for the airway pressure alarms, reference the alarm settings panel in the top right hand corner. If the patient's airway pressure registers above or below the limits defined in this panel, the CCV will signal an alarm to notify the user. We will spend a lot more time reviewing the cause, diagnosis, and mitigation of alarms in session 3. In the center of the front panel, just below the ventilation settings, you will see the battery parameters. A green light will illuminate next to the text reading external AC power connected when lit to indicate when the CCV is connected to mains power. Below that, another green light will illuminate to indicate that the CCV is connected to an external battery. The battery level shows the level of status of the battery being used. When the battery is charging, the lights farthest to the right will blink on and off. We revisit this in part 5 on power and battery connections. Below the battery parameters, there are two smaller panels. The one on the left labeled additional settings includes the oxygen conserve button, which allows the CCV to limit oxygen consumption and accept a low pressure oxygen source. We will go into more details on this feature during session 2, part 4 on low flow oxygen sources. Next to all to conserve, you will find the manual breath button. This allows you to deliver an extra on-demand breath to the patient at any time. Now that you've covered the full anatomy of the CCV, take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the side panel connections and the front panel controls. Review the ports, inlets and panels until you feel more comfortable with the terms used to describe the various components. This will help you as we start learning how to assemble and set up the CCV for clinical use. In the next video, we will focus on the proper assembly and connection of the patient breathing circuit.